these other um, diagnoses that go along with them are not necessary. <laughs> They're usually caused by something that happened when they were younger. So if we can take that out of the equation now, then you create happier and more productive people going forward. My name is Kayla Kim Cannon. I am an integrative herbalist and I coach parents who have children that have been diagnosed with ADHD. I have three boys. All three of them fall into that category in one respect or another. When they were first diagnosed, we went about a very traditional route of trying to handle things, medications, doctors. Um, with my youngest, we did therapy. We even went so far with him as getting him genetically tested. And none of it seemed to work. My youngest had a very rough second grade year, so I ended up homeschooling him for third grade. And while I was homeschooling him, I took a deep dive into why and how ADHD works. And during that time, I also started life coach training. And the combination of the two, I had like this light bulb moment and realized what I was trying to do was to make them fit into a system. It was a, a form of people pleasing almost. I was trying to change them to fit into something, whatever they need to do to get by so they're not in trouble. It was all about fixing and changing them to fit into a system that just didn't accommodate them very well. And so that's when I started um, experimenting at home, playing with different things, using my life coaching tools as well as the research I had done to come up with a way of, well, first and foremost, I had to accept the fact that they're not broken. There's nothing wrong with them. They don't need to be changed. They don't need to be fixed. They're not a problem. The way their brains are wired, their nervous system's function is not a problem. And once I got there, then I had the freedom to experiment different um, tools and different methods and techniques to make it to where almost like life accommodated them as opposed to the other way around trying to shove them into a um, shove them into a corner or put them into a closet or put them into a category that wasn't useful for them but when i dropped the judgment and i started accepting and actually working with them rather than change them their behavior naturally changed on their own because they had a safe place of love and acceptance at home where we could talk about things and we could try together and get their input and their opinions on what we should and shouldn't do and how we work and so when he felt safe at home and they felt comfortable enough to talk to me, their behaviors naturally changed outside of the home too because they weren't constantly feeling like there was something wrong with them, that self-judgment, I'm, I'm broken, I need to be, uh, I'm not good enough. That kind of went away and realizing, okay, I don't have to be angry, tense, and anxious all the time. And that, um, by, so just by changing the way I viewed them and then the tools and methods of parenting that we used at home had significant changes in their school um, behavior and academic success as well. My son, right after his um, eighth birthday, we were, I went to go tuck him in bed and he was having trouble sleeping. Of course, anybody with ADHD kid knows it takes a little bit for them to unwind to actually go to sleep. We were having a conversation. He was rehashing the day he had at school, which that day happened to be really bad. And he was going, you know, mom, I'm so sorry. I wish I could do something different. I wish it could change. And towards the end of that conversation, he said, it's just that my brain is broken. God shouldn't have let me live. And I was like, what? And he's like, well, he said, you know, when we have pets or animals and things, I said, you know, when the cow lost her baby before it was born, <clears throat> dad told me it's because there was something wrong with the cow that it shouldn't, you know, that it couldn't live outside of its mom. So therefore it was born early and passed away. He said, God shouldn't have let me live because my brain is broken. There's something wrong with me. And it utterly floored me. And so I, <laughs> you know, we were talking and I was trying to respond and it makes me want to cry thinking about it. And he did, like he sincerely and truly felt like he shouldn't be alive, that there was something so broken with him that he didn't even deserve to be alive anymore. And that's when I had enough. I bawled my eyes out, held him while he cried, um, cried most of the rest of the night. And that's when I made the decision that I just, I wasn't gonna do this anymore because there was nothing wrong with him. And, but he was so convinced it was that he didn't even think he, he deserved to be alive. And at eight years old, using the combination of the work plus the research, has changed things so much in our house. It's made things so much more peaceful. Now, instead of dreading phone calls from school, I accept them as what they are. Instead of constantly fighting and arguing to change behavior, we can look for solutions instead of always focusing on the problem. And it's made things so much more peaceful for both of us. It's given me some freedom. Um, I'm not worried all the time about what am I gonna do when, if he comes home with punish work? Or you know, if we have to go detention again the next day, what am I gonna punish him with next? How am I gonna handle it? What do I need to do to change, to fix, to alter him in some way? It's giving me tons of freedom. And him too, because like we have freedom now to talk because he's not worried about me judging him or comparing him or getting so flustered. Like, how dare you do this? The world thinks I'm a terrible parent because you're in trouble every day. Now it's like, hey, did something bad happen today? What can we do next time? Let's talk about this. Um, no, the teacher doesn't hate you. She just doesn't understand things the way that you understand them. It's just freed us up so much. 
in our um, conversation, our communication, and then also to try things, fun things at home. You know, when we're doing homework, we don't have to sit still and just do it. We can clap, we can dance, we can jump, we can sit outside, we sit on the floor, um, march around the room every 10 minutes to make sure he's getting enough brain break time. It's just, it's given me so much freedom to learn and explore and then get to know him. And it's actually bled over into my adult children too, even though they're in college and they're grown, it's changed our relationship too because I've dropped the judgment of them as well. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, I can't believe you procrastinated to the last minute to make this appointment or do this thing. Now it's like, okay, well, you know, <laughs> if you miss it, you miss it. Next time, you know, you might want to try something different. It's even changed that relationship. And so given me much more freedom to be able to get to know them and who they are as people rather than just children with a problem. Get to know and appreciate the beautiful side of the way that this brain works. Um, the details that note, they notice, that they're actually very, people with this type of nervous system are also very calm in crises because they have 27 things going on in their head all at one time. So when you're put in a chaotic situation, it's easy for them to start being able to um, react in a calm way because they live in chaos all the time in their brains. So in, um, in crisis situation, they're actually very, very reliable and calmer than most people would imagine. And the loyalty and um, the ability to like relate back to their own childhood. That's why we have so much fun with laughing and joking and crafts and playing games and just learning to appreciate that more positive side rather than constantly worrying about you know, the punish work or whatever trouble they're gonna get into at school. This work is so important and it's so powerful. I see it because a significant majority of kids who have been diagnosed with ADHD also tend to have co-diagnoses like ADHD and anxiety or depression or eating disorders or um, substance abuse. And everybody, not everybody, if you know and you've researched the origin of those types of situations, the substance abuse, the anxiety, the depression, there's underlying emotional scarring and trauma that leads to that. Learning that they're not broken and taking away that added pressure has a significant reduction in the co-diagnoses. So I see going forward that a kid who's diagnosed with an ADHD-based nervous system doesn't have to deal with the other self-hatred and self-doubt that leads to these co-diagnoses, which are much more pro problematic as they get to be adults. It's a general mental and emotional health. It's, a, it's an emphasis on preventing rather than trying to cure. So instead of waiting until someone is on medication or they've been arrested or unwanted pregnancies are fired from jobs, if they can be emotionally healthy before they get to that point, it's of course gonna have a significant impact on the world because then you get to use and see how extraordinary and creative and passionate a person with this type of nervous system is and see exactly how far they can go in terms of success instead of constantly worrying about these co-diagnoses that set them up for just a more difficult lifestyle than they have to have.